that at least for the next three years, your analysts are predicted to lose 70% of their productive time to activities like finding, preparing, integrating, and sharing data sets. Now we got this and more stats just like that in our top five data analytics, AI, and entrepreneur posts of the week. Let's get started. Now, before we go through those, I want to make sure that you know you can participate in this conversation by liking, sharing, commenting, and letting me know what you think about these posts. You can also tag me in the post that you like to make sure that I see them. You know, we're trying to build a community here where we exchange this knowledge. So don't be shy. Let me know what you think. So also I can produce a great video for you every week. Let's get back to this Gartner stat. It's really interesting. It's part of a piece that uh, Jorgen, uh, one of their analysts, published this past week. He talks about the avoiding the five pitfalls of data and analytics team. And there, there are many of them, of course. Uh, in my mind, uh, you know, the, the this first one on inbounds of, of skills is an important one because we already have a data skill shortage. But of course, if the folks that are qualified on your team are direct towards the wrong uh, tasks, you know, that's really going to amplify your problem here. So I guess the takeaway here on this one is, you know, it makes the data engineer role a really important persona, a member of your team. In fact, it's one of the suggestions uh, from, from the report. But secondly, look for platforms that allow you to find shared um, data sets in a more liquid, more uh, flexible manner. Second issue that uh, Gartner talks about is the idea of budget. Actually, they say that analytics leaders often fail to connect the proposed organizational method or model that they use to the desired business outcome. Now, in my experience, you know, people react more when it comes to budget. They react more about to what they're going to lose rather than that they're going to gain. And so if I look at some of the customer best practices that I see, one of my customers who's in manufacturing has been able to identify the cost of the wrong decision. And in her case... Every time they make the wrong decisions, cost the company about $50,000. So it allows her to have this conversation around not just what they're going to gain, but also what they're going to avoid doing, which is poor decision making. $50,000. Ask yourself, how much does a bad decision cost at your uh, company? Now, number three and number four pitfalls on the list of Gartner is about data literacy and, and also not being able to focus on the most important data initiatives in there. In this case, for instance, you know, do you invest in a governed data lake or do you invest in a self-service data exploration system or do you do both? And then for that, Gartner has a great um, maturity model that you should take a look at. But at the heart of the problem is really change management. Data analytics success comes from successfully affecting the culture and driving change management, both for the company, but also for the product leaders that are serving these customers. And so timing couldn't be better. This coming Wednesday, I will be talking about product management best practices with my friend Crispin Reed, who I worked with in the past and now is the CEO and founder of a community called PMM Hive, uh, Product Management, Product Marketing Hive. And here in our session on Wednesday called Up and to the Right, I'll talk about three things. I'll talk about what makes a good product manager. Lots of resources here, but I'll give you metrics, uh, ways to measure product management and product managers that hopefully will be helpful. Second, I'll talk about why most product management organizations actually don't understand how to work with analyst firms like Gartner, IDC, Forrester, and so forth. Many of you out there think about... Um, Analyst as a, a an output, if you will, to your product strategy, and you're talking at them sometimes, so maybe a little too much. And I'll explain why thinking about the analyst know-how and knowledge as an input into your product strategy early in the formulation of that strategy is going to be helpful to you. So we'll dive into that. And then I'll talk about how you can win by focusing on customer value, customer centricity. I will talk a lot about that. And, and I hope that you've got your pen ready and your questions. Uh, I can't wait to hear the issues that you're grappling with and hopefully I'll give good answers uh, to you. Now, we'll dive into the common mistakes and that's for product management. We talked about data analytics earlier. I want to talk about common mistakes for startups, which is a great blog that Dave Kellogg published this weekend, actually. And he, it comes from uh, insights from his friend, Mark Tice. Um, and there's quite a few in there that I think will be helpful to you. Uh, I'll highlight three that I think are really important. One is 
the business model blunders. You know, if if your churn is greater than 15%, then you have a problem with your product or your market or both. So don't ignore churn and make sure that you calculate churn accurately. Dave has some great best practices on that. Second, again, customer success investment. You don't invest in it too late and don't invest in it wrong. Customer success needs to focus on renewals while sales can focus on ARR. And, and, and Dave talks a lot about that in that blog. And then finally, maybe for startup founders, you know, there's a bad assumption here in alignment of, of incentives. I think about that investors are, have shares. They also align with your incentives and thinking that they have the know-how that you need. You got to watch out for that because the most dangerous investors are the ones that are very smart. They're very opinionated. They're very convincing, but they lack in operating experience. And that's what you need. That's why you need go-to-market advisors like Dave Kellogg and others to help you out. Look for advice from people that have done this before. And it's really, really important that you focus on that and that you drive that into your customer centricity uh, efforts. Now, if you want to know more about culture execution and customer centricity, there's an absolutely amazing podcast that has been produced by the good folks at Recode on Netflix and the success of Netflix. And really, you understand there why actually being customer centric is the biggest threat uh, to your business because Netflix did not kill Blockbuster. Poor customer experience did. And in this six-part series, I think, uh, Rico does a great job highlighting the, the Netflix culture. And it's also ahead of a great book that's coming out that Reed Hastings has uh, written. It's coming out in the fall. And the book is called The No Rules Rules, Netflix and the Culture of Reinvention. Uh, take a look at that. You could probably pre-order that book. I will certainly take a look at it myself. Look, I hope these resources are helpful to you. And I hope to hear back from you in likes and comments and shares. I will see you next week.